Okay, back to that cutting things down and cleaning things up. Minimal impact on the overwintering pollinators. While I was cutting down Daisy, can you see what, what uh, was happening? I can't, besides the dots on the leaves. Yeah, oh. those old leaves. There she is. Yeah, I, I couldn't oh, catch her. Goodness. She was moving so fast. Um, the spiders go scurrying. The ladybugs have to find themselves a new place. They've spent the whole winter tucked in there in that debris. And I'm not about to deny them that space because she's there because that it plant has. has aphid problems uh, sometimes. Not terrible, but she knows they were there last year. The, the, she tasted the aphid, so she's staying on that plant. That's where she's going to lay the eggs. And that's going to get, she's going to get there a lot quicker than any that happened to fly mm -hmm. in from someplace else. And that's happening on all different levels. There's so many, so many beneficial insects out there um, that you really want to have them there. I, I had to take some things out of the way while I was renewing. This is a wattle um, structure that I put into our, our deep swale in the front yard. We call it the ditch garden. And, and people have asked me, what are those there for? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, they define area. It'd just be a big rectangular hill. Wow. Uh, but if I define the area within that space, I can have um, orange milkweed coming up and something different on the other side. But also, many of the critters that we want in the garden, including a lot of these butterflies, are looking for nearby uh, firm, upright, woody stuff to put their chrysalises into. So it's it's there. Unfortunately, though, this is now five years old and some of the wood at the bottom is, is beginning to rot. And that's the point, let it rot. And we have a bunch of pine branches that came down this year. So I had to do some walking in and out of there um, to, to rebuild it. It's worked really well. See the cedar post, the second one here, see? It was leaning. So I took it out of the ground and reversed it. The dark uh -huh. part was in the ground. It's still, it's still five years in the ground. Five years, not even started still, to rot. Yeah. Um, so I had to cut some of those tall stems that you see laying around. I had to cut them out of the way in order to do this. And no, uh, in the past, I have told people, I bundle those up real loosely put a stake in the ground and stick them up to stand up. And then I realized as I walked by with my bundle, I said, well, I've got the arms of the, the arms of the Mugo pine are, right. just, are lifting, are just asking me to put that stuff mm -hmm. there. So although that looks like a uh, flood uh, after, after, after the flood, flood water is received, yep. I'm going to leave that there until we start seeing the first butterflies. And I'm about to bundle up the, uh, all of the sage and lavender that I cut down. And lay them up there too. So you might want to see if you've got a place to. They don't go to the chipper. Yeah, they don't go to the chipper. I want Not them. Yeah. I want them loosely bundled because I've watched butterflies emerge from their chrysalis. They they pop out and they need room to spread the wings out. So you don't want a tight bundle, and you don't want it sitting on the ground with all the pressure of the wood uh, of the branches above it. You want it to be airy. So if you've got a place like that, use it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our roots are showing. Yeah. I took a Wygelia out of the ground. This is a dwarf Wygelia. has been in the ground, I think this would be 20 years. And this, you're looking directly at the bottom of the root mass. I've flipped it up on its side. And can you see where the pot used to be? Can you see the circle right there and the flattened roots that are girdling each other? For 20 years, this thing has been growing not as well as it should be able to grow. I cut those roots. I cut this one here. I cut this one that flips over on its side. Um, and uh, it also was buried deep. See all of the extra roots there mm -hmm. on the side? And it has a new home now just uh, just down the street. Thank you, Stephen, for taking yep. it over to Ace's house for me. And roots, hopefully it will do roots, well. Roots, roots, roots. Last year in uh, the summer, I put this crab apple in the ground, and I looked at it. Uh, it's at my sister's house. I, I looked at it and went, oh, shoot, that's the graft union there. That is not the flare. And this is going to be a mess. So I took it down to bare root. The main roots, the, the flare roots, I've got my hand on one of them and I'm pulling it out, so I'll stretch those out. But most of that root mass that you see that's all yellow and orange up there, most of that is all adventitious, adventitious. roots. So to plant it at the right level, it looked like this. <laughs> I left all of those roots like a, a spider of many legs. Mm -hmm. I just left the tips of those roots in the ground just to help as a nurse root for a little while until the other roots grew and said, keep it well watered. Well, I went, I went by to see how it looked and how it was doing. And uh, when I went, I saw something that I hadn't expected to see because I was going to cut those roots off this year. And I went, oh, well, John must have cut the roots off. And then I looked closer at them. Oh, 
Uh -huh. I realized, no, somebody ate, ate them. them off of there. The deer, I put the, uh, it started out with a temporary shelter around it until I came back with enough rope to put my regular crisscrossed ropes to keep the deer from butting it. But they can get their heads in and uh, that angled cut uh, is pretty surely a deer ate the roots all the way around, ate the roots off of that too. And yeah, uh, um, what whoops, the... where's it going? There it is. Yeah, took a good bite out of that. I don't know if that's a deer or is that a mouse or a uh, something it, else I, that likes to scrape. If it was but... a mouse, if it was a mouse, there'd be a little more ragged on the edge that's because they take littler cuts. Yeah, and um, it, it could have been a rabbit, but I'm pretty sure that that's a bite of the deer, and there are deer there. No, not that. It's gone. Anyway, roots, they're always on our minds. Hmm. Uh, we don't really need more plants. No, we don't. But this is one of the years when the butterfly bush, because mm -hmm. it was such a mild winter, did, enough, did, did not die all the way back. At all. If you don't cut your butterfly bush down, it's going to sprout from where you see the green at the base, but it's also going to sprout from higher up. So green at the base and also higher up. So this would be a year when if you let your, your full-size butterfly bush grow without cutting it back or you just cut the tips that are dead back you're going to have a 10 foot shrub and it'll be a 10 foot bushy. twiggy bushy thing which is not what we want yeah um but i was thinking about the especially the low branches that are been laying on the ground and and sheltered by the ones above mm. they're green right to the tip i thought well, that's a real shame because i'm going to cut this back i can't handle a 10 foot plant in this place here and Mary Ellen had just sent me pictures of her Brugmansia cuttings that she said she, they, they're sprouting roots. Yep. Let's see them at the bottom there. They're sprouting roots. Um, when should I plant them? Well, plant them right away. As soon as there are roots tips formed, as soon as those cells organize themselves into roots, Root, a little bit it's of, ready. they are pulling in water. If you let them go until you've got real long roots, like the long white roots that I see coming down there, those roots developed, it's kind of like develop, growing up in the space station with no gravity. Okay. Water. They, uh, they they could be crushed by the soil. So you want to get them directly into something else. Well, I said, okay, you know, why not? I've done it in the fall. Might as well do it in the spring. So I'm going to stick the spade in the ground and open a slit. Do a slit. I'm going to take the base of that butterfly bush and strip the leaves off. Just take my fingers and slip right, And went right down. Right down. That's leaving damage now. Those damaged places, the plant's going to react by... Uh, creating cells from the meristem. And if they happen to be in the dark and cool while they're forming, they they're going to form be. roots. So into each slit, I stuck a couple of pieces of butterfly bush because Tracy's garden next door could use a few more plants, even if I can't, and we can let those grow. How, long, how quickly will they form roots? Sometime this year. And I put two in each one because I get about a 50% take when I yeah. dip butterfly bush cuttings. Um, so it's not going to be a big bush this year, but it's going to be a free plant. Yeah. An it illegal will. plant too, if you if you just uh, use the ones that are the patented plants. Yeah, don't do it that patented and give it away. And I also um I, I also rescued more of the daisy. I put back less than the full size clump. I put three pieces of daisy and took a picture, not because it's a pretty picture, but because I have to keep remember. I have to remember that I planted something somewhere. Yeah. I will look later at my pictures and go, why is that picture? Oh, oh. that's why that picture's like there. And that's why those this well, this one is here. It's telling me that I put those Veronicas over there um, because I bought some new Iris yeah, Articulata yeah. at a at a conference. At the conference we were at, yeah. right? Because I told Steve, I said, oh, you know, we're so pretty too. You, I I always I forgot to order bulbs. Well, I went to plant them in the ground, and fortunately, I did not break any of the others that were there. But I'd already planted there. I'd already we already had them in there. Quite a few. But yeah, Iris gardeners. Yeah, we do this. Crested iris, they're such beautiful little things early in the year. Um, and we are looking for new plants. We do have a list. We always do. And before I order them by mail, I look locally. Yeah. Let people know what you're looking for. And it can be fun. And there's not that many of us who are this crazy that we would bother people to do what I do, which is I went over to um, a local garden center where I know that they pot up their plants. And I said, hello, Sharon, Michelle. Uh, <laughs> Can I come in? Because they're potting. If you look, if you think you have a lot to do, if you think you're <laughs> overwhelmed by your spring garden, look at all that potting mix that two ladies standing at a potting shelf all day long are putting up the plants, boom, 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 the bare root boom, plants. Boom, 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 boom. And they've still got to fill that whole greenhouse. 
um, I went, I just, I, uh, while they were potting, we talked and I, I read them my list and they told me that four of those things on the list they've got and, yeah. and that they are excited about. I said, oh, good. That's good. You know, um, and we, we commiserated over some other things. No, you can't find that. How come you can't find that plant anywhere? Um, also, it's the time of year when you can see the plants that they've overwintered. And you could say, oh, going to be a good top place to get buck, buckwheat this year. Mm -hmm. This is that um, Canyon Creek buckwheat with the yellow flowers that the pollinators just love. But those are overwintered from last year. That's going to be a heftier plant. Uh, yeah. So, you know, go and talk to people about what they're doing. And you can also then see somebody else's garden. They've got a garden outside that greenhouse. And I realized Pushkinia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think Pushkinia is the sweetest early flower um, it does spread like squill, though. You get you get more and more of them every year. So sometimes you want to admire them at somebody else's house. 